Hello and welcome to Ginger Prime. My name is Brian and I'm making this guide for anyone out there who's getting started with Destiny 2 in 2020 or even considering jumping into Destiny 2 for the first time. As a longtime Destiny player, I decided that I would jump into the world of New Light to see what has been updated for the new player experience and really try to help remove any of the confusion that this game has. Because as much as I love this game, it doesn't really tell you much about what you should be doing and how to go about doing it. So if this is the video that YouTube recommends for you, you can easily check out the playhead below to jump to any section of the video that you find you might have questions that you're looking for. And after watching this video, if you still have questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below or check out our Discord server. We've got a great community of Destiny players always looking for new talent, ready to jump into raids and other content within this game. Now, if you're also still looking for more in-depth guides, you can check our Destiny playlist. The link will be in the description. Or you can also check out our Destiny and other related focus podcast channel, Ginger Gaming Radio. The link will also be in the description if you're interested in some content to do or listen to while you grind it out and power level in the world of Destiny. But with all that said, all the links that you need to know are in the description. But let's go ahead and get started in the world of Destiny 2. Curiosity is as dangerous as any weapon. So trust your instincts. So Destiny 2 begins with character creation, asking you to pretty much make a decision on what class you want to play as. So if you're typically more of a Halo style player, you're probably going to enjoy Titan. If you like Call of Duty and the movement there, you're pretty much going to enjoy Hunter. If you like being a wizard in space, you're going to enjoy Warlock. Now I have a guide pretty much detailing the skills and the jumps and the movement of each of these jobs. I'm going to include a link in the description as always, so you can go check that out and hopefully that helps give you what you need. But beyond that, don't worry about this decision. This decision doesn't matter because you can have one of each and the best thing for you to do, especially if you're enjoying the game, is to make one of each so you can see how they play and what works best for you and your play style. The real question comes into your race, gender, face, and features because you cannot, at the time of this recording, change any of this. It's so interesting that these have no impact on your gameplay whatsoever. However, you cannot currently change it. In the game, you kind of have three races. You have human, you have awoken, and you have exo. From a lore perspective, humans are humans. Awoken are former humans that got collided with some big bad bang kind of stuff. You'll you'll learn about it. And then exo are robots that essentially used to be human. It's a really cool stuff. Dive in, enjoy the lore of this game. It doesn't matter. And but the only thing is is cuz you can't change it, you can't change your face be sure that you're fine with how you look. They've talked about adding this in the future to where you can kind of go back and change how your character looks. But until that day, this is the most important decision because you can always make a new character of any of the three classes. So once you've created your character, the game is gonna put you right into the tutorial mission, which takes place in a zone called the Cosmodrome. This is really the first mission of Destiny 1 and this is gonna be setting the stage for your entry point into this universe. From here, you're going to be taken, though, into the tower. And this is where you're going to see a lot of crown symbols like you see here on the screen right now. Now, you can pull up the map to any of the zones that you're in by holding down the select button. And the default selection here in your director is called map. So you can see here I'm in the tower and there's a couple symbols I want to kind of talk to you about. The blue crown is a quest symbol. This is going to be something that you're going to want to pay attention to and we're going to dive into the quest tab here in a second. You also see these blue, light blue life exercises, vendor challenge kind of options. What this means is if you see the bounties of zero of eight, every week as a part of your power grind, knocking out these bounties are going to be a ways that you can increase your power and that's going to be how you track your progress. So look for the blue symbols because that's going to be important as well. If you happen to be a part of a clan, there is also a vendor challenge that is tied to your clan as well. You can see your clan and stuff information. We'll dive into that more in just a second. I want to focus in on quests because the question is how do you actually unlock bounties and that is going to be coming from the quests themselves. When you go and first zone into the tower, go talk to everybody that's got a symbol over their head. Especially if you're brand new, you can come up here and talk to Amanda Holiday. She's going to have the legacy missions, the year one content like the Red War, the Curse of Osiris and Warmind. Most of this stuff is believed to be going away as a part of Beyond Light which drops in November of this year. Once you've accepted those quests, if I just pull back up the map, if I want to fire up that story, I can do so. And so you'll see various quests and main missions having a symbol that represents the story that they are connected to. So I can press A to jump into that. 
You can also see from a quest perspective, power level at 750. You're going to start this game at 750 when you first join. However, by just playing the game and getting drops, you're going to start getting gear that's higher powered than 750. And one of the first goals to hitting like those bounties is actually to get to power level 770. That's going to unlock a quest from Shax, who is then going to provide you the ability to then get his bounties. And that's going to be part of your weekly rotation as the gameplay loop goes in search of power. There's a lot of things that you can be doing, but just note, it's important to unlock your bounties. That's gonna feed in a part of the content that you can do. Same thing goes for Zavala here in the tower. And the nice thing about this game is that you can hover over any of these individuals. You can press A and it's gonna make a waypoint that you can start to see as you move through the tower or even the field itself. So for example, if I hold select to bring up the director, I go to destinations and let's say I want to go to earth because this is when you first start the game, it's going to take you to earth. It's going to want to have you talk to Darum K here. you you track him. It will even tell you what's the nearest jump point that you can jump into to be able to access that. Now here on earth, you can see a couple different symbols. You see quests you see these wonderful little like rainbow shaped things. These are lost sectors. The game will introduce you to lost sectors, but I highly recommend that you check them out because it's also a great way to get rare gear and more. And then you have adventures. These are like side quests that kind of help you drive into that. Over here, what's flashing is a public quest. As you jump into these zones, this game is a shared world shooter, looter, RPG, or as the devs like to call it, an MMO or an action MMO. There's going to be things that are going to drive you into PvE content, like you see here on the European Dead Zone. There's going to be things that drive you into PvP. And over the course of the years, the game has gotten much better at allowing you to kind of play the way that you want to play. But there's still some legacy stuff that may, might force you into PvP or might force you into PvE content in order to complete the quest itself. But again, like I said, they've gotten better. What I'm hovering over now is a strike. Think of this as kind of a dungeon, even though uh, Destiny does have dungeons in this game. A strike is kind of like a easy match made PVE uh, content, and you're going to do that. And the reason why you want to do strikes is because it unlocks your strikes, bounties, etc. But dungeons are definitely high level, way more difficult, three man semi raid content. And then finally, the raids in the game are six man content that the game will not match you or match make for you. You're going to have to find your own team. Hence, check out our Discord. Hence, check out other communities like Reddit uh, to be able to get connected with more players in the game. Now, beyond going to anything specific, we've got three different types of content that you see here floating under Earth. Crucible, this is your PvP playlists. And you're going to see Control. You're going to see Supremacy. And these up here at the top are what are called Rotator playlists. These are going to change each and every week. Control is pretty standard. Uh, elimination is pretty standard. Uh, you also, right now, at the time of this recording, have a concept called Iron Banner. For PvP enthusiasts, this is where power matters. One of the things that keeps people away from PvP because of the RPG aspect is they think that just because you haven't leveled up means you're going to be at a disadvantage in PvP. In normal PvP, you can see here that level advantages are disabled here on the screen. Now in Iron Banner, level advantages are enabled. Thus, you probably don't want to jump into Iron Banner right away. You might have a bad experience, but you can easily go into control and find and compete, uh, especially when you learn the maps. The disadvantage that you have actually going into PvP over any other content is that you don't really understand the maps quite yet. You might not fully understand your own special abilities quite yet. Just because somebody has a better gun than you doesn't actually make them better at the game. You can compete easily with different, uh, different color weapons. It doesn't make that big of a difference. It's going to come down to skill and understanding the map and how to use your abilities more than anything else. Here it is going to matter. So just kind of keep in mind. And then every weekend there is a, a kind of a big uh, kind of PVP event that you can participate in. But if you're on PC, uh, you might find that it is a very difficult, different experience than that of on console, just because people like to hack and cheat and things like that. It's a thing we'll keep you up to date on if that gets fixed in the future. So my advice, especially when you're starting out and trying to figure out what to do, hit A on these quests. These are going to allow you to track your progress and give you de direction whenever you're going to your destinations or your map. You can see here that I've tracked quests and I see this beautiful little green symbol that is telling me that I need to go into this content. I also see this wonderful little gold star symbol. This means I've got rewards there that I can go and do to increase my power level. 
Power level is really kind of where this game is gated. Uh, there's no traditional level that's actually moved in, into the seasonal concept, and I'll show you that here in a second. But your power level is going to be what's going to get you into the content itself. It's going to be where you find whether there's challenges or the game is maybe a little bit too easy. Now you can be overpowered and the game is still going to present you a challenge. So having too much power doesn't really break the game. I know there have been people who wish they could go back to power level one and experience the game that way. Everything kind of balances itself out. Now you can see here, I have a bunch of different gear that drives that power and I can hold down the right trigger to see a nice little comparison and I can just press A to equip it. The power is going to take into account all of the gear that you currently have equipped that has a power level rating to it. So if I go over here, this is definitely much higher. You can see here now I'm power level 811. The current time of season 11, season of the arrivals, the power cap is considered this. It is 1050 is what is called the soft cap. And then 1060 is what is called the hard cap. 1050 is going to be what the game pushes you to with what's called powerful gear. That's anything you see that's going to says rewards powerful gear. That's going to move you forward. Pinnacle gear is the drops that are going to move you from 1050 to 1060. It is going to roll based off your average. And the beautiful thing is it's going to roll based off the average of the items that you actually have in your inventory. So instead of saying it's going to roll a Hamlet at 808, it's going to look at everything I have here and it's going to say, oh, he's got an 848. So my slot leveling is actually at 848. Now, if I equip it, my power goes up. That's great. But it's still going to have those items. So even if you don't want to equip the, the right item or the item that for itself, just make sure you have something more powerful in your inventory. Now, as you're leveling, you're going to see it's going to be dropping lots of stuff for you. Feel free to go ahead and just dismantle it. If you're not using it, get rid of it. You're going to see that I'm going to get gunsmith materials and glimmer. And in all honesty, that's what you kind of want to be getting. I wouldn't recommend spending a lot of these right now, but you want to grab these because it's going to be important, especially as you get into Beyond Light. Now, if I dismantle a purple, it's also going to give me legendary shards. These are very important to your overall experience and there's nothing wrong with them. So don't feel like just because you got a purple and it's lower powered that you need to hold on to it. Go ahead and get rid of it, especially until you start getting into that 1050, 1060 range. Or if you're watching this video in the future and the power cap has gone up, which it will, uh, you're going to find that you can obviously just find work yourself to that soft cap. Then the currencies wise, because we just talked about it briefly, you have silver. This is your premium currency, which you can use to buy different things. We'll talk about the seasons and more in a second. And then you have bright dust. This is a kind of a premium currency that you get from using bounties that are going to open up various things in the store. I want to come back to gear and I want to come back to some of that more in a second. But you can see here items that are sale for bright dust. These are varying, you know, things that can help benefit you like ghost shells that increase XP or just different items and things like that can overall just help enjoy the game more. Like if you wanted an exotic speeder, which is kind of your bike or your mount, you can do so. Uh, so just kind of pay attention. Some things cost bright dust, some things cost silver, but I want to take this time to kind of talk about expansions. We know we have future expansions. We have bright uh, beyond light, which is coming shadow keep, which is current forsaken, which is current. And then in the year next and after that, the Witch Queen and then Lightfall. So Destiny 2 is going to be this platform that you're going to be able to invest in and play for a while. I don't know about Forsaken. We don't know if that's going to become free. We really don't know the future of that. But if you have Game Pass, you have all of the expansions. So if you're a part of that ecosystem, don't worry about it. You're going to have all of this content starting in September of this year. From there, even, and that also includes Beyond Light. If you're not a part of Game Pass, if you're not in that Xbox ecosystem, that's perfectly fine too. I personally would say at this time, wait on Forsaken unless you're just dying for content to do. Get Shadowkeep because most likely you're going to have a great time with Shadowkeep and really enjoy the content there. But none of this stuff needs to be purchased right away. Honestly, just spend as much time right now enjoying the base game, what it has to offer, the year one stuff. And then if you decide to stick around, I would recommend voting for Shadowkeep and then maybe checking out Forsaken. Forsaken's fantastic. This isn't knocking Forsaken whatsoever. It's just saying that we don't know what's the status of that because we know the year one stuff is going away and we don't know if Forsaken is going to end up replacing that in the free tier. So just kind of hold off for now. Uh, before we jump back into our character and more of that conversation, then you have the season pass. The season pass is not included in game pass. So if you have game pass in the season, you can buy each season for 10 Dollars. A season is going to typically last three months and it's just going to be, you're going to level it up regardless. You're just going to get a bunch of free rewards at the top tier. And then at the bottom, and then you can see kind of the top tier starting to get a little bit thinner 
over time. And then you have the bottom tier, which is going to give you something each and every level. And this can be in range from all kinds of exotics and different items and things like that. It is a battle pass of the sorts. So if you've been able, if you've seen that before, you can do that. You can also buy seasonal ranks, but they are expensive. When you think about a dollar a rank, it is, uh, I wouldn't recommend it, especially with 96 days and at the time of this recording, ready to rock and roll. So one thing I do want to make sure that you focus in on as much as you can, is you talk to Banshee 44 here in the tower, you, he's going to have varying quests for you, especially that relate to various exotic weapons if you were part of the season pass and other quests that you want to talk with. But more than that, you have his bounties. You can see here, just like with Zavala, just like with uh, uh, Shax, for some reason his name was <laughs> blanking on my mind, you have what's called weekly. You have a week to complete these, and these are going to give you lots of really great rewards. And then you have dailies. Check in because you're going to see these rewards for enhancement cores and mod components. These are going to allow you to be able to purchase varying mods. Mods. These are going to allow you to get the materials so you can use upgrade modules and upgrade modules come into play when you're talking about your character and infusing gear. Now I've saved a piece of gear here. Let's say it's uh, 755 and I have a higher piece of gear. I can go ahead and press Y to go into any piece of gear. And this is where Armor 2.0 comes to play. But before Armor 2.0, you have this concept called Infusion. You can see I have 10 upgrade modules. And if I wanted to take this piece of uh, gear that is lower level right now and infuse it with something that is higher level, I can do that using an enhancement uh, module to now take those uh, purple boots and upgrade them in power. Thus, I don't have to break them down. At the time though, I would still recommend as you're leveling, just take whatever's highest and save on those upgrade modules because they're expensive. Now, the nice thing about upgrade modules, you see Wing Theorem here. Let's say I want to upgrade Wing Theorem. As long as I am using another Wing Theorem itself, I can just upgrade it with Glimmer. So I do not have to actually upgrade uh, just using those modules. If you get that same piece of gear, it's just going to cost you Glimmer to upgrade. And at that point, I would recommend it. At some point, you're going to get into the Armor 2.0 system. And you can see here, 2.0 is going to cost Glimmer and it's going to cost Legendary Shards. The more that I put into the 2.0 system, the more it's going to cost. And eventually, it's going to cost higher level of currencies, in this case, enhancement cores. I would not recommend putting a lot of, in, you know, of time into this, especially as you're leveling, this really comes into the min-maxing at the end game. By increasing its energy, you can now increase the different mod slots that you have equipped, which costs Glimmer in this case. As you acquire those mods that we're talking about with Banshee, you're going to power up as well. So now I can incre increase different mods, but only up to the point in which that I have energy to do so. And now this gear has those modifiers on it. So if I go take a look at the piece of gear, I can see the different mods that I have attached to it. And it's going to tell me what those mods do if I hold down the left trigger. If you look at the screen right now as well, current power cap or the current power is 75 of this piece of gear. The power limit is at 1360. That means this piece of gear is going to have a cap on it at some point at 1360. This means that the gear will retire at some point. But what you don't want to do is you don't want to invest in gear that has a power limit of the current seasonal power cap. So the seasonal power cap is 1060. That's what I talked about, that hard cap for your power level. This is why you want to look forward. If you're going to spend time and resources in perfecting that perfect piece of gear for you, at the end of the day, be sure that it's got a high power limit on it. Otherwise, you might find yourself really hurting as soon as the next piece of content drops. Now, if I go and equip it, being that it can be a glimmer upgrade and I already kind of put some time into it. Let me go ahead and do just that for a thousand glimmer. And now you can see my power level is increased and I have those mods on my character itself. Now let's say you find a piece of gear or a gun or something like that that you really enjoy a lot and you don't want to get rid of it. You can press Y to go into details. You can come up here to the lock symbol and down click right stick and just like a button click to be able to lock it. Thus that's going to prevent you from accidentally, accidentally dismantling that piece of gear. So it's like if I press X it's going to say uh-uh. You have to right click again uh, the right arch stick to be able to unlock a piece of gear. But to lock it again you got to come back in here. Couple things about like different weapons you'll find is that you have different sites and things like that that are going to change and enhance your stats over here. Impact is going to be your damage. Range is going to help with the distance. Stability is really good regarding uh, your controller play. And then you have a reload speed and how you kind of do that. Check a look at rounds per minute because based off of guns, you might have a preference. You might not like a handgun at 1010. You might like a handgun that has a slower pace or a faster pace to it. So 
you're going to have to play around with the weapons itself. And then sometimes you'll have different options, especially on the more rare gear, uh, to kind of pick around different uh, choices. So in this case, reload speeds down, or I can pick this to have kind of a magazine that drops on reload, wasting ammunition, but greatly increases your reload speed in that case. So you can kind of pick how you want to do and what to use from there. You can also choose to try and master work, uh, weapons. In this case, uh, and weapons are gonna roll with sometimes random perks and random uh, things to upgrade. So you can see here for Glimmer, I can start increasing its overall range. If I get this to level 10, it's called master working and it's gonna give it an overall boost to the weapon itself. So that's kind of one of the other leveling games that you have within the world of Destiny 2 uh, as a part of that. Now, we talked earlier about character creation. I do want to spend a little time here talking about your varying Void Walker, or excuse me, your subclasses, so to speak. Subclassing right now is based off of Void Energy, Arc Energy, and Fire Energy. Uh, each of these is going to come with its own super, and you're going to see three tiers. For new light players, you're not going to have the middle tier, but for, uh, you know, like you'll have that what's called top tier and bottom tier uh, that are going to augment your skills in different ways. Again, we kind of go over these skills in more depth when it comes to that guide. Check it in the description. But overall, play around with your different jumps and how you choose to kind of build your character out. You can easily swap between the different, uh, you know, <laughs> the different elements, which are going to affect your super, which is going to affect your jumps, which is going to affect your grenades. And yeah, go forward, have fun and play. The, the middle tier that is added, it's a part, you only get access to this if you have Forsaken or if you have Shadow Keep. It's going to actually augment your super in unique ways. I'm not going to go to it here, but it's just something that you should kind of keep a note of. Finally, regarding your power level, as you play, you have what's called your seasonal artifact. This is going to feed power that you're going to get by experience. You can go into it and you can unlock seasonal mods very easily by just kind of clicking on different things. And as you do, you're going to open up tiers to be able to get new mods themselves. And these mods have different costs to them. And they often are even better than some of the other mods that already exist in the game. Because the reason is, is that they're very cheap to apply and they're not going to take up too much of a slot on your inventory and the cost in and of the self is in the corner so from your armor 2.0 perspective you can see the energy cost on some of these mods some of them being quite expensive some of them being free easy and cheap the nice thing is is that there's no power cap you can grind and grind and grind as much as you want and it's going to keep leveling up so while there is a power cap here you can uh, break through that power cap of 1060 by using your mod and go up to insane levels the only downside is right now based off the current design every season you get a new artifact so every season your base grinding power does reset lastly and i'm going to use banshee as my kind of test case example as you break down gear as you break down weapons you're going to get these weapon telemetries and gunsmith materials for the others, you're going to get tokens like PVP tokens, PVE tokens. And I would recommend at this time, unless you're really trying to grind up really fast, sit on those. Wait on those because as soon as uh, Beyond Light drops, you can start turning those in to excel and bounce into the higher tiers of your power level. So just keep that in mind. It's important that as you're playing right now, not to worry about mastering everything, not to worry about whatever. Find the fun in the content that you're doing. Do you like PvP? We'll just focus in on PvP right now. If you like PvE, focus in on PvE right now. Vanguard Strike playlist, Nightfalls are going to be really great for you to experience. Vanguard Strikes is going to make all strikes available to you whether you own the content or not, and that just is going to put you into a random rotating playlist. If you pick it, if I pick on this, just look at from a power perspective what this different surge or singe is in this case. So, and then you want to align your subclass to that singe as a part of the Vanguard playlist because that's going to allow you to have uh, powerful drops. They're going to that are going to complete for you each week from PVE or Gambit. Find the fun and do what you want. Now, if you're also and we've talked about this in other videos, but just to cover it here before we wrap up this guide, these planets or non-planets, moons, whatever, uh, they have these triangles. This is the darkness that's invading that's going to lead us into beyond light. And note that you're not going to have access to these locations come beyond light. So if you're trying to complete or get caught up or do different things, look at the different locations and prioritize the content within. So if you want to jump into Mars, you can sit here and start to see different things that you could unlock. Quests, content, and treasure chests strikes etc these are going away so have fun find the fun do what most <laughs> excites you 
and go from there. Now, within the game itself, everything's kind of driven off of um, milestones. So if you're ever kind of curious about what to do, whenever you're in the game, you can hold down left trigger uh, within the map system, and it will kind of give you a heads up as to what's happening. Now, we've just covered a bunch of information, and hopefully this has been a help. And hopefully it gets you started with this game. Let me know if you have any questions and welcome Guardian to Destiny. I hope that you really enjoy your time with the game and hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you feel like it's earned either a like or a sub, let me know in the comments below so we can welcome you officially here to the Soul Nation and Ginger Prime itself. But with that, I wish you all the best. Thank you for watching. Again, my name is Brian and hopefully I'll see you in another video. But until then, take care. This video is sponsored by me, Ginger Prime. Hopefully you'll check out my podcast channel, Ginger Gaming Radio, which we have lots of guests, lots of great conversations, and even more highlights. Links are in the description below. Let me know what you think. Thanks.